What's up? I'm with Ace Calvero, and uh, we're in his garage in Long Beach, California. We're going to talk about his 1972 shovel head. Did a lot of really cool custom work on it that we're going to go over, and then uh, we'll get some shots of him riding around. What's going on, man? Sweet. For me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> when did you get this bike? Um, I got this bike in November of last year, so it hasn't even been a full year since I've had it. But yeah, I got it out of Glendale. Um, I had been looking for a shovel head for probably about five months, and uh, this bike was at the time listed um, in the beginning of me looking for it for a pretty high price, and it was just kind of out of my reach at the time. And then fast forward five months later, the dude drops the price, and I, I think I caught him like an hour before, or an hour, within an hour when he dropped the price, and I lowballed him, and he fucking went for it. No <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So um, hit him up, and I wanted to go look at the bike tomorrow, and. Um, the guy was like, oh, I'm out of state right now, but it's at my buddy's shop, which happened to be an adventure bike shop, which was kind of weird. Um, but a lot of red flags right there already, right? I'm um, going to look at a bike and the guy's not even there. But I went to go check it out and everything looked good on it. I mean, besides the leaves in the gas tank, you know, just, <laughs> I was like pretty excited to get the bike. So I was like, you know what, let's get it. This is my first Harley. So yeah, just getting into it. But oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And you completely redid it. Completely. Um, so how long did you ride it around as it was? Um, well, when I initially got it, I pretty much changed a bunch of stuff on it already. Uh, mainly the pogo seat that came on it. And it had like the really wide pan head bars with like, you know, the horn buttons and all that stuff. So got all that taken off and uh, ran just whatever I had in the garage, really, like some buck horns and um, had uh, my buddy actually gave me a seat. Uh, to throw on here real quick, I just strapped it on with a belt and just went for it. And um, during that time, I kind of just wanted to like see how the bike was mechanically, because you never really know with these things, you know, it's hit or miss. Yeah. So um, once I figured out it was good, then you know, just started getting into it. <laughs> and then you tore it down and painted it, modified the frame. Yeah, yeah, that was recently. That was like within like the past, I guess, three or four weeks. Um, uh, but Tore it down um, mainly to do a drop seat conversion on it. Um, the whole reasoning for that was just to try to get more of like a downward line with the frame and the bike and uh, kind of just streamline it and make it look less boxy. And also too, like the riding position. Because when I got the bike, I, I always felt kind of weird on it, you know? Sitting Where, a little like, far sit forward. Far forward or up high and it just didn't feel right to me. You know, that wasn't like my type of riding style, I guess. And I wanted something a little bit more tucked into the bike where you're like in the dimensions of the bike, really. Yeah. So that's kind of what I went for in terms of like building this one out. I have a, an uncle that's you know, a gray beard, like long time right, right. guy. He rides like the shovel head. And he would always tell me, uh, every other motorcycle you sit on it, but with a Harley you sit in it. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I needed to get that. I needed to get that. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. Yeah. Uh, and it came with the adjustable wide glide. Yeah, so I don't rem remember exactly what year this wide glide came off or came from, but um, Panhead generation for sure, uh, serve a car. Um, but yeah, it came with that, which is kind of weird because I thought it was a reproduction front end, but it ended up not being that. Um, somebody pointed out the casting numbers to me one day, and I was like, oh shit, like, it seems to be worth some money, so I kept it on there. Um, it, it was one of those things where it kind of grew on me. Like, it, it's kind of a weird front end, right? Like, you don't see them very often. They're starting to pop up now, but, yeah, I figured I'd just go ahead and run it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, love, I love the chrome trees, too. You usually see them with, like, the black bottom tree. Yeah, exactly. Whoever had this front end before spent some money on it, for sure. So, getting it chromed and stuff, so, yeah. Rad. And then there was a bunch of little details. You windowed the neck yourself? Yeah, I did. Um, the neck, originally I was just going to go with like the normal like full window right up uh, in front of the neck casting, but I figured, you know what, I'm going to cut all that out anyway, might as well try to do a partial window, and that's kind of how that took place. Um, it was just a lot of file work. I don't know, I kind of just went for it, and it ended up working out. Um, uh, also too, like right up on top, that section, um, I actually built up a lot of material on there to kind of get it to that shape because normally it would kind of dip down and just looks 
not very cast like. Yeah. Like it looks very like it looks weird, so I kind of like shaped it to where it kind of gave it a funky look. So yeah, one of my favorite details is the tank mount, like right in here where you were just talking about. I yeah. like absolutely love it. That was the first thing when I saw this bike at the uh, the Brixton party. That was like the first thing I saw on it. Right. Um, I don't know why that was the first thing I saw because there's like so many things, but for some reason I was just like, I think because I remember this bike with split tanks, so naturally mm -hmm. like I looked at the tank first right. and I kind of right. like saw that and was like. Damn, that's like a lot of intricate work. No, for uh, sure. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. I mean, you know, a lot of people, there's a ton of people that have probably done this like partial windowing, uh, but you know, kind of doing something right there just to give it a, like a, just a tiny bit different. That's all I needed to do. Yeah. So I'm glad it stood out and yeah. Where'd you get the Hummer tank from? Uh, the Hummer tank is actually not even an actual Hummer tank. It's a reproduction uh, sporty tank that I, converted into a Hummer. So um, I think Willowbrow offers like the switch housing and stuff like that. So um, cut out the, you know, the filler neck for a lack of a better term from the center, patched that all up, moved it to the right, welded in the switch housing and did all that. Added a rear tab on the back of the gas tank just to kind of make it look, you know, I guess more like a chopper tank, I guess. And um, added a quarter inch MPT bung on the back. That way I'm getting all the gas out of it. So yeah, there's a, I'm glad it looks like a real Hummer tank because uh, I tried my best to really get it to that. I think I just had it set down on the floor and I had like a picture on my phone. And I was like, all right, this is where I need to get it and got it dialed. And that's funny too, because I, you know, um, I was originally going to run, they make like a reproduction Hummer tank, low bro. Yeah. You know? I remember getting it in and you know that emoji that looks all cross-eyed? Like, yeah. <laughs> it looked like that to me. And like looking down at the tank, I was like, dude, I cannot run this shit. <laughs> like, there's no way. So. I kind of just I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll just order, you know, sporty tank and convert one myself. And yeah. That's how this one turned out. And then, so tell me a little bit about the work on the drop seat frame and kind of what you did. You said you ordered, you got the castings. Yeah, the, and... yeah, the castings uh, are from John. Uh, he runs Hardtail Choppers and makes some pretty cool cast stuff and um, or castings. And he offers these drop seat castings to go ahead and convert your. Uh, I guess late later model shovel head frames uh, to a drop seat frame, and what that entailed is essentially just cutting off the uh, seat post or the seat area and redoing the tubes. Um, there was a kit that somebody else offers online, but just for the price, you know, I figured I could just make it happen myself. So I just bent up the tube, made some slugs, and uh, figured all that out and welded it all in. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Straightforward. And then uh, moving, you know, just kind of going back a little bit. So these struts, you did a lot of work on those to make them look how they do. Yeah, the fender struts um, were actually like, I ordered these, I found them on eBay. Like they were like an emergency fender strut just in case I couldn't figure out like my original idea with the bike, which I didn't figure out. So I ended up running these. Uh, originally, these fender struts, they're like stock FX fender struts that come all the way out here, like almost past the rear wheel. And um, I knew I was like, gonna cut and shorten the fender or the fender up, so I needed to cut and shorten the fender strut up to make that work. Um, so these are shortened by two inches and um, like other little details on it, like kind of where the bends are, like I TIG brazed that and kind of molded it in, that way it looks a little bit smoother. And there's like a corner right where the drop seat casting is and I kind of radius that in, that way it kind of flows in. Wow. Yeah. Little things that you would never really like know unless I told you, right? Like, um, it's kind of like a small, de small, subtle detail, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of work for it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so nobody's gonna really be even to tell, you know. So, did you do the molding on the tail light yourself? Yeah, the tail light uh, is actually a part I got from my buddy. Um, it was one of those that. Originally, I was just kind of bolt, bolt it on. Normally, how you would mount one of these tail lights on. It's a it was a RH55 like tail light, which would normally come on this bike, which is like a this I think 70 to 72 FX would have this same tail light. Um, so I was just gonna mount it on the fender normally, and then uh, my buddy was like, "Why don't you mold it?" I'd never done anything like that before, but I figured might as well take a crack at it, and it ended up working out. Um, this is actually my like my first time really dealing with Bondo or like yeah. filler. So that was kind of a, it was tricky. It was a lot of uh, going back and forth with that, but ended up working out. Rad. Yeah. yeah, it looks awesome. And then 
you said you're gonna remove the license plate and put a little sissy bar on there for trips yeah yeah so i made like a that license plate is actually like kind of like it's a reproduction of like the older like knucklehead type license plate frames i guess but um i widened that out and made welded bungs into the fender and kind of reinforced the fender that way i could have like a floating sissy bar because normally you would have like you know the fender struts there would be like a plate on the side and i just didn't want to do that and or kind of have that look there and it's, i can't even do that now because it's a blind hole fender strut i think there's no holes to put that on yeah so um yeah i'm just gonna make like a floating sissy bar deal make it look nice and yeah and did it originally come with the l card or did you put that on no i put that on that's another car uh another part from the same homie shout out dustin <laughs> but um yeah that one was a uh, it was sitting on his old iron head and i was looking at it and he was like you want to run it and i was like sure i'll run it <laughs> and then yeah it's been it's been kind of tricky getting that thing figured out uh i've had multiple people tell me like you know all the ones that you see are nice all run like shit and uh, you know I, I don't doubt that because the float level on these things are kind of like tricky to figure out especially with the amount of lean my bike has with the kickstand i think i could get it sorted out but still working out some tweaks on that yeah yeah and so is there anything about this paint that's special why did you choose this color uh the color it's nothing like the original color um i, I follow this uh they're like a hot rod company they worked on like chop marks in japan they're called fit customs and they have this they built this 50s chop mark um that had this color oddly enough from like a french car a peugeot and i remember just th that color standing out to me like a lot and um I had like another project back then and I had mixed up some paint and uh, did some spray out cards and I've always had it in my shelf and I remember kind of putting it up to the bike and I was like, this might work and ended up buying more of that paint and um, actually like completely messing it up because I added like a whole bunch of pearls and all that to it to kind of like give it a different color and feel and yeah, I mean, that, that's like, this is actually like my first paint job. <laughs> like I painted it here in the garage, just hung the frame up upside down from the roof and made it work. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't, you didn't really skip a beat on this thing. It's like, I, I remember I, I saw the, I saw the first version of this bike, like a Roland Sands thing or something. Yeah, yeah. And then like a couple months later, I was like, oh, where's your bike? And you pointed it, and I saw this. And I was yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, it's really cool. You know, you really took the time and effort, did, like, pretty much, you did everything yourself, from the paint to all the fab work mm -hmm. to the molding. Um, yeah, it's really it's really refreshing to see. I think it's really cool that you didn't hardtail it. I think it gives it a lot of character. Right. I mean, that's still an option. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I figured I'd take a crack at a swing arm build because it's almost kind of hard to do them. Um, and get them to where they kind of have a different feel or catch like your eye a little bit more than some of the other ones out there. And I don't know, like, I guess I have the ability to kind of do that. So I figured I'd just take a crack at it. Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Do you want to hardtail it or do you have like a version three in your mind? <laughs> probably not. I'll just get another bike at that <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one will probably stay like this and, um, you know, with, with this bike, like the titling and all that stuff is like straight. So yeah, with, having a California bike that's like just solid. I'm probably gonna keep this one for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ace. Yeah. Right on. Great. Sick. <laughs>